Best advice is if your heart's not in it, don't stay in it. Uh, there's no point doing something you don't love. Uh, you won't achieve your best capability if you're not truly believing in yourself and in what you're doing. I read that uh, a while ago, it stuck with me um, and it you know, spurred me on to start my own business. So, I mean, our business transcends science and real estate and urbanism, but actually probably the most ins inspirational figure in my life is a musician, uh, is Neil Young. Uh, on a couple of things, I think uh, a man or a person that can create five decades of music out of essentially five different chords. I'm a musician, so I find it amusing listening to his work and trying to replay it and going, hang on, it's the same things again. But a man that set out a vision, he protects indigenous rights. He's a native from Canada. His work on environmentalism is inspiring. And I think there was a great poster that Jeremy Della, this sort of YBA artist of um, you know, the 90s and 2000s, he, he put out a poster that said, what would Neil Young do? and I bought one of those posters and it's framed in my flat and it's a great way to question what would Neil Young do with any situation and uh, generally he's right so I try to follow that advice of what would Neil Young do. I was torn in answering the sort of the two best things uh, or even the one best thing of what I've read in my life. Uh, the two greatest books I think I've ever read, uh, American Gods by Neil Gaiman and Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. In particular uh, American Gods, it's just the, the uh, incredible story of essentially immigration to the land of North America and the way that he interweaves characters and folklore into the descriptions that are incredibly vivid uh, is, is, is a fantastic book and Slaughterhouse Five, I can keep reading it, I keep finding something new, it's absurd and I love the journey that I get taken on. I actually do a lot of meditative drawing anyway. Um, I, I did a lot of art when I was at school. I actually went to art school itself and one of a really liberating feeling is actually just putting pen or pencil to a paper and just letting your hand move almost from your subconscious in a way. And it's when you look back at these images, uh, it tells a lot about what you may be sort of contemplating or thinking at that time, whether you look back at it the same day or you know a few days after or even years after, it really tells a deeper story. So I think for me, it would just be a, a very meditative process to see what I was feeling in those moments and then draw it out on a piece of paper and I think to hold that piece of paper for a period of life to go, well, this is what was happened when I was left alone in a day. What I'm most proud of, so uh, I'm very proud of the work that I'm doing with uh, my business partner. Uh, but aside from that, in, in the financial crisis recession, I was given an opportunity uh, to, to set up a business that gave free studio space to artists, to young artists, often students. And it was a win-win-win in that we essentially helped uh, property owners with uh, office buildings so they were empty. We were able to work out special agreements where artists could take these space on a short-term period. And we all, everyone sort of financially looked after themselves in a really good way. And I think what was really inspiring is that at a time when a, a lot of opportunities were being taken away from people, uh, we found a way to unlock opportunities and artists uh, who are now up for the Turner Prize, uh, a guy called Oscar Murillo, as well as a, uh, a, an award-winning photographer, a lady called uh, Juno Calypso, it were two particular artists or creatives that I was really proud to have actually given studio space to in that time. Uh, so I think it was called Act Arts and I did it with a, an art curator and it was just inspiring to take over the fifth floor of an office building in the City of London or 20,000 square foot overlooking Waterloo and fill it with artists for, for two months and have just a piece of magic occur that nobody ever really thought of. But it was an exciting time when you could delve into buildings and spaces and experience something you never thought you could. One thing I really try to do is laugh. It's life is too stressful, especially when you know, you're know you running your own business, uh, you live in complex times, uh, life can be difficult, uh, business can be very difficult, you can easily get swept away in having a lot of sort of mental anxieties and I think the most important thing is to find moments to relinquish that energy. Uh, mostly that is it is good for your head and if you're trying to make big strategic decisions you know I work with scientists we understand the benefits of things such as mindfulness and how to restore that within a day some people have agency to create that within themselves some don't so the great opportunity to go right how do I make sure that my mind can be clear it can refocus it can re-engage on something really complex whilst all these big forces around me are getting quite difficult 
cool. Uh, laughter is just a great way to escape and focus and really make sure you get to the end of the day going, I'm still winning. So at the moment I live in Kentish Town in North London. I'm actually born and bred North London. There's a handful of us still kicking around. Most people I know are out in Australia, who seems to be the journey. Uh, what I love about it, in particular Kentish Town, is its proximity to Hampstead Heath. You know, we, we talked about mindfulness before. Uh, we talked about the complexity of work and how your brain needs clear space to think. Uh, having the ability to, even during a daytime, if you know working from home, to go for a walk over someone like Hampstead Heath, uh, gives your gives your mind the capacity to re refocus and rehandle complex things. I think that's one of the things I value from it most. Um, in spite of it having a very disastrous high street full of buses and pollution, I think the area, its proximity to greenery, is integral to a, a quality of life that I wouldn't want to live without wherever I moved.